tick. So that's like the pendulum, the beam of light bouncing between the mirrors, and you could use that, actually, to build a very accurate clock. Then Einstein imagined what that clock would look like if it were moving relative to us. So what I'm going to have happen is Jim is going to be moved along the stage. <laughs> Keep moving the clock. And then we can dim the lights and we can see what that looks like from our perspective. We're stationary relative to Jim. And we've also got... So there's a little box there you can see. That's Jim's head camera. So Jim is seeing, of course, the clock in exactly the way that we pictured it when it was stationary relative to us. The light beam is bouncing up and down between the mirrors. But if you look, and we've got a sort of little video effect on there so you can see the trail, you can see that the beam of light that we see is tracing out a, a triangular pattern across the stage. Beautiful. Thank you. Can I get off now? You can. Sick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. That was a bit fast. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what a great use of that wonderful intellect. <laughs> but it was beautifully demonstrated. What, what, we, what we saw there was, if I sketch it out again from... from from our perspective now, from the audience's perspective, is that here are all those mirrors. So this is the light clock that Jim was carrying. But you saw that from your perspective, watching Jim move, the light took a kind of triangular path as it bounced across the stage between the mirrors. Here is what Einstein's postulate, if you like, Einstein's suggestion that the speed of light is constant for all observers, implies. See, this path is obviously longer than this path. So, if we all agree on the speed of light, then it is obvious that it must take the light longer to tick for the moving clock than it does for the stationary clock. Moving clocks run slowly. This is true. Time really did pass at a different rate for Jim. It passed at a different rate for him than it did for you in the audience watching Jim move. There's no sleight of hand here. Jim really is a time traveller. <laughs> <laughs> Our time is personal to us. This is what Einstein had discovered. There's no such thing as absolute time. Now, why don't we notice this in everyday life? It's because the amount by which time slowed down for Jim was minuscule because the speed he was travelling was so small compared to the speed of light. But if we'd have sent Jim off in a rocket, would you like that? A rocket, just flying out into space. <laughs> Let's say that we catapulted Jim off at 99.94% the speed of light for five years, according to his watch. Then we tell Jim to turn around and come back. It takes another five years to get back to the Earth. So for him, the journey would take 10 years. But for us, with our watches ticking faster than Jim's, 29 years would have passed. Jim would return in 2042, having aged only 10 years. It's a real effect, he'd be a time traveler time travel into the future is possible.